Welcome back, everybody, to By Faith Bible Studies podcast. Today, what we are talking about is our thoughts in general on modern evangelical worship. So that, that, that's kind of a big term and uh, sweeps over a lot of people. Uh, but we, we, we want to talk about what we're seeing in the church, what, what are our thoughts in just general worship um, to God and uh, how, how should we be uh, writing songs today in the church? Um, what, what should that look like? Um, and we're we're going to try to uh, use verses to back up how to properly worship God. So, yeah, so g- give us a little definition, I guess, of what is worship and then also what is modern evangelical contemporary type worship. Yeah, so... Um, let's go to the Bible for <laughs> what worship is, because yeah. that's where it's from. So, in Psalm 150, I think that's one of the most famous ones, uh, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Pretty straightforward. <laughs> um, and then Acts 16.25, we have uh, Paul and Silas practically doing this. So, it says, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Uh, and it says praying and singing hymns, but I think that those are combined because when you're singing to God, you're also praying. So I think that it's saying that when you're singing to God, it's also your prayer. So part of worship is prayer. Um, Romans 12, 1, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. So that's another form of worship, which is not necessarily singing. Um, and then I have some quotes from some people about what worship is. So we're going to define worship. Um, and this is, what, this is what we need to do first before we get into what music is good or not. Because if you don't know what worship is, then the rest of it kind of doesn't work. So uh, John Piper says that, Worshipping is a valuing or a treasuring of God above all things. Um, uh, William Temple says, Worship is the submission of all our nature to God. And then he continues, The most selfless emotion of which our nature is capable, and therefore the chief remedy for that self-centeredness, which is our original sin, and the source of all actual sin. I thought that was really cool, uh, and really specific too, because... He's saying that not only is it submission, which is kind of adding on to what uh, John Piper said, which is you value God more than anything, and so you submit to, but it's, uh, I like what he says, it's the chief remedy for that self-centeredness, which is our original sin. Mm -hmm. So, what is worship? It's basically praising and giving thanks to God. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Yeah, worship is, can take its, Form in many many ways uh, and it, it, as long as it's always focused towards God uh, that that's really what it is our entire lives should be characterized by uh, worshiping God we should be people who are known by just being totally submitted and totally just consumed by uh, our desire to worship God and praise him for who he is so uh, yeah, what what uh, would you say is the modern contemporary type stuff <laughs> with the music? Well, we see in churches like Elevation Hillsong, their focus is more on emotion and concert-like performances than actually playing in God. And don't take my word for it, literally go to their YouTube channels and watch the performances. They have... Just like the concert style live streams where it's like quick camera cuts and all that stuff and hyper music and a lot of instruments and just all out. And I'm not saying having a lot of instruments is bad. In fact, it's good. It's just when you're going all out crazy like that as a form of, you know, emotionalism, just getting your audience involved through emotion and not the theological, you know, the lyrics and their theological meaning. That's where the problem starts. Yeah, and these... I think it's like, I would say it's the big three, Elevation, Hillsong, and Bethel. Those are the big ones that, uh, it's not just in their own churches. They 
have a widespread uh, influence on thousands of churches across America. Churches, just, they play their songs, they, they worship and, and sing songs that these like big uh, name bands and, and worship groups write. And, and if, if it's not solid, if it's not proper uh, in the way that it's uh, written towards God, then it's dangerous and the, the influence is not good. I think we can all agree, no matter who you are as a Christian, what your thoughts are, if you think that a rock concert during church is great, and that's like <laughs> an amazing thing, um, I think we can all agree that the worship towards God and how, especially how we write our music and how we perform worship in church should be the best possible. It should be the highest quality. We should try to be making it better and better. Why? Because God deserves the best that we have. He deserves the absolute best of who we are and what we have to offer. So uh, I, I think that's what we should be looking towards to be able to do uh, in, in church. And uh, we're, we're not saying that uh, everything that um, the, these like big uh, worship groups that, that are popular that they write is bad. It, it, a lot of it's like not even, it's more neutral. It, it, it's, it's not as much like, oh, super heretical or anything. It's more just like about us. And a lot of it can just sound like uh, Christian e secular music. Like you, you just like have secular music and throw in like a couple Jesuses in there and you're good. Uh, but, um, and then I, I also think, uh, how, how these big churches, what, what, what they do is they, they like to bring in celebrities. They like to bring in the world and have them perform their songs. Uh, we, we see that with like Justin Bieber. Um, he is not an example of great Christian like faith, whether or not he's a saved or if he's a Christian, that, that's not our place to judge, but he is no example to follow for young Christians, to, to look up to him. But yet, all these churches, they seem to invite people like him, people like I, I Lecrae as well, these uh, so-called Christian artists, even though they have one foot in the, in the church, one foot in the world, which does not work. Um, we cannot serve uh, two masters, right? So uh, we, we, the church brings them in, and it's to draw unbelievers. That's what we say. It's, it's to draw unbelievers. It's to get them to come to church. They, they, they want to see these famous people perform Christian songs. That's great. Isn't that good? Well, again, people are going to look up to these people. Uh, they're gonna, unbelievers are going to be like, oh, it must be okay to live like this. When, when we see uh, people like Justin Bieber cursing on stage at, at a worship conference, like, oh, it must be okay to curse as a Christian. And, and it's not uh, really going to the word of God to s seek your authority. It's going to whatever your worship leaders do, what, whatever your uh, pastor does uh, on stage. That, that's what makes it okay. That's what Christianity actually is. And I think it's dangerous to have that uh, type of perspective. Bringing one, uh, one bit of the world in to draw non-believers, I don't think it works. So, any thoughts? Yeah, I think a famous example of that is uh, Church by the Glades. I don't um, know. No? Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, it was funny. I was watching a video on this, and one of the comments was talking about that church being like one of the worst. And I looked it up, and they're straight up playing like some of the most secular songs you could think of as worship. And they're using an out-of-context verse, obviously, to justify it. Mm -hmm. It's really sad that they call that worship. I think that's the worst of the cases in you know contemporary Christian. Oh wait, 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 it's the one in Florida, right? Glades. Yeah, I, ju I just got that. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I have heard of that. Watched a Colin Miller video about that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the title of his video was "I Think I Found the Worst Church." <laughs> 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 After he's covered Bethel and, and uh, Elevation, he's like, "Yeah, this is the worst." <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, it's it's not supposed to be just a display to make people be like, "Whoa, look at how amazing this church is! Look look at how cool it is!" Um, 
it's just a lot of spectacle but where is the meat where where is this uh substance in the worship that actually uh that that, that actually draws people's hearts and makes them more closer to christ brings them into a stronger relationship with him uh, i think so much of worship today is just uh, j- just saying words and it, it, I guess it has God and Jesus in it, but is it like I, I am worshiping with my whole heart, with my whole spirit. These words are drawing out what I actually feel. I, I can't put it to words, but this worship song does the best it can to draw out what my heart actually feels towards God. That, 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 that's what a, a worship song I think should actually look like. And personally, when I when I uh, sing worship and when I listen to Christian songs, personally, I like to have something be very profound. When when I'm listening to it, the lyrics uh, I want it to be like, "What did they just say? That I I never thought about that. That is so amazing." Like when when they start using words like justification and and propitiation, I'm like, yeah, that's the stuff. That's the that's like a really theological uh, song. But but you you want to be able to like ponder the the lyrics. It shouldn't just be surface level. It should be like being able to dig deep and uh and if you are inviting a lot of unbelievers to your church, have the song contain the gospel. Have People, when they hear and listen to this, it, it may be like a great song. Have it contain the everything that a person needs to understand to be saved. Have it contain the gospel. They're, they're like, huh, everyone's singing this. Maybe I should sing this as well. Uh, it, it, this, this is interesting. It makes them think about it. And then once you have the message, that again reinforces that. I think that's another great way in evangelism. To, to, to just have people start listening to Christian music. And, uh, and I, I know people who say that they've <laughs> been saved by Christian rap. <laughs> Hard to believe, but the spirit works in many ways, I guess. <laughs> um, but uh, but it's, it's, I, I think striving to make uh, songs not more like the world to draw unbelievers, but when unbelievers do come across a solid song, They'll be like, this is convicting. It convicts my soul. It convicts me of my sin. Hey, I need to repent and trust in Christ. So, Yeah, and I did also uh, want to go over this point. I I think the, one of the most important parts about this music is the philosophy behind it. And I don't know if you've heard of uh, the Jesus music film. Yes. Yeah. So... I did a little bit of research on that, um, and I also found what I think is the source or like the start of contemporary Christian music, or what we would call contemporary Christian music. Um, and it's funny, I, I haven't told you this yet, right? No. Yeah, so this is for them to know, <laughs> because it, it's it's funny. Um, there's this guy who was listening to a musician who you know claimed to be a Christian, and he was doing music very differently. It was more upbeat. It was fun. It was energetic. And uh, but, but he called himself a Christian. And so this guy was like, oh, cool. I'll make worship music like this. Um, do you have any guesses who that artist was? Who he was inspired by? Wait, wait. So, so the someone was listening to a Christian singing. Supposedly Christian, yeah. But it wasn't a necessarily a Christian song. No. Okay. And then the person listening wanted to write Christian songs. Inspired by his type of music. Oh. Yeah. I have no idea. Who? Who? Elvis Presley. What? What? Yeah. Uh, based on my research. I mean, if you guys think that's so long, <laughs> let us know. That that, that's, that's funny, though. I, I guess. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, it was crazy for me to hear, so I had the exact same reaction. <laughs> but, yeah, that says a lot about mm-hmm. how we are, where we are at. And the Jesus music film didn't exactly say that wasn't true. Like, 
uh, if you watch the trailer for it, I haven't watched the movie, I feel like it's going to be a waste of time. But yeah. just like some of the quotes in the trailer were just enough for me to say no. Yeah. Um, there was one, this isn't a direct quote, but uh, it's from Amy Grant. Uh, this is sort of a paraphrase. Uh, she said, in hymns, you close your eyes and sing to Jesus. I want him to sing with open eyes and to each other. Huh. <laughs> and that just sort of speaks measures to what yeah. they're doing right now. Is instead of singing worship to Christ, they're just singing to each other. Yeah, that's it, and it's. I think that says more than anything we can say. Mm-hmm. That that's the foundations of it, and so yeah. One, one another quote. It's not a quote, but another idea from it. Um, I I think it was like it might have been Toby Mac or someone that said uh-huh. it, is that. Uh, Worship doesn't have to be the way that like old people do. There's a they, there's there's like what they were saying is there's a new way we could do music, yeah. you know, worship music, and that's the whole thing of how Lecrae happened of all that stuff. Yeah, and it's it makes so much more sense once you realize the history behind it, but it also makes it much more sad. Yeah. So if you want more history, I guess as to how contemporary Christian music or Christian music came to be about. <laughs> um, I don't want to say I recommend the Jesus Music film because I haven't seen it, but uh, my parents actually saw it, and it, it it does speak about the history. So Yeah, it looks like an interesting documentary. I'm not really... I, I don't know many of the songs that they're going to be talking about. Like, some of the artists, like, I know of them, but I, I'm not really interested in their music. So, uh it, it, it's interesting. I feel like that, that crowd... Who who are making that film? That that's like the the precursor to what we're seeing today. I, I feel like it's a little bit older version. Uh, that that that's kind of like making, uh, like what Amy Grant said, like uh, singing to each other. <laughs> uh, I I think that's uh what what birthed this modern day like just let's put on a concert concert for Jesus, you know, like let's make this rock and like crazy and. Uh, ha- have everyone like I guess filled with the spirit that's their idea like make it as loud as possible get the drums the the, the bass going oh yeah woo Jesus <laughs> yeah I, I heard that they were actually I think it was the newsboys for uh-huh. their concert they were going to have a like spinning drum set <laughs> yeah the newsboys are another one <laughs> yeah. yeah it started with DC Talk that's yeah yeah, and that I think that's that came from um, what was it, like the hippies or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like even starting with the hippies that says a lot about it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like the, these uh, crazy like so called Jesus people who want like love and peace. Like they they definitely like like Jesus for his love and peace, but not uh, as much for uh, him calling out uh people and saying that you need to repent (laughs) uh i think we definitely see that in songs today if you get a mention about sin in a in a modern day song i think that that that's big (laughs) and that's sad though because what what that does is again it, it reflects the preaching today as well we don't hear as much about sin and you need to repent for for uh for you are going to perish if you do not come to christ uh we we, we see that in preaching that uh people they they really cut out sin i i i think a lot of pastors today they, they say oh that i think joel Osteen said this oh they already know that they're sinners we don't need to tell them and then vody bacham did uh i i think there's that clip he's like p- p- people we, we say that oh they, they they know that they're sinners no they don't no they don't they do not know they think that the person who murders people on the TV, that's a sinner, not me. There's a guy down my way, down in Houston, Smiling Joel. Smiling Joel says, sinners don't need to be told they're sinners. They know they're sin. No, they don't. They don't. They don't. They look at the guy on the news who hacks somebody up and they say, that's a sinner, not me. And uh, we, again, are seeing that in our song. We're singing uh, to God. We're, we're, we're singing to him as more like everyone's a child of God. We're all children of God. Not as much talking about like, hey, only those who have been bought with a price, bought by the precious blood of Christ, 
those whom he has uh, chosen out of this world, those are the children of God, not everyone else. So uh, that's that's what we're seeing being reflected in uh, Christian music. The, the the preaching and the music reflects each other. So, uh, yeah, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think we can move now into our thoughts on it. So yeah. here's a very generic question. Is it good? <laughs> Um, me personally, no, I, I, what I enjoy, what I get out of worship is like I said, something theologically deep thinking about the great doctrines that are taught in the Bible and and, and talking about the cross, talking about where we uh, were saved, where we were purchased um, and it's at the cross and talking about the resurrection that Jesus is alive. Not as much talking about like, oh, Jesus pulled me out of like the, the stormy seas and, 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 and I, I'm, I'm not drowning anymore. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm, I'm not going through this like mental toughness time. And that's what Jesus did for me. And I, I, it needs to be more like, look, he saved me from hell. He saved me from his wrath. Look at him. Look at how great my God is. He is merciful. And yet just at the same time. He is gracious. And yet he does still uh, punish those who are sinners. But for those who trust in him, that punishment was laid on Christ. That's the type of song that I like. That's the type of song that actually convicts my heart. So... No, I, I don't think it's good just personally, but it, it's not the best out there. It's, like I said, it's not extremely heretical, but we can do better. We can do better as the church to make better and better songs for our, our, our king, for, for our Lord. So, Yeah, um, I would have to say uh, contemporary Christian music is too broad for me to say yes or no. Because there are some artists, and we're about to get into this, there are definitely some artists that have really good music. Um, but I'd say, I know that you were specifically thinking about Hillsong and such, and I would have to fully agree. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> uh, I do not recommend listening to that stuff if you want to grow spiritually. And I like, um, I think it was Justin Peters, uh, he was saying in a video that Hillsong doesn't even meet the requirements for a church. So it's mm-hmm. a false church to begin with. So anything they produce will be false too. If God doesn't like false churches, which he doesn't, obviously, like so that means that God would really be in favor of Hillsong. Mm-hmm. Why would he be in favor of what they produce? Yeah. And so when you're filling your soul with Hillsong's content, that can only lead to bad things. But... Like I said, that doesn't mean that everything made, you know, in like the last century is bad. And should we get into that now? Well, I, I was also going to think about the form of worship in church. Because, as you know, I go to Grace Community Church where it is very, very traditional in, uh, in the main worship center. Uh, the choir. And yes, there is a choir. It's not like a worship band. It's a choir. <laughs> With with a with a bunch of string instruments, brass instruments, and they, the choir all has robes and stuff, singing to the Lord, and we, we have hymnals that we open. People, it's not on a screen. It, it, it's it's we actually open up a hymnal, and people are singing uh, with, with the hymnals open. Um, is that the best way to do it? I don't know. I I I think that uh, I enjoy that type of worship. What I most enjoy about the traditional uh, hymn singing is that the, the songs are really solid. That, that's the most important. But when I go to high school, uh, yeah, we, we, we have a drum set and we, we have guitars. And it's more of a worship band uh, in, in there. I actually enjoy having a little beat to it with, with, with the drums and the, the guitar and the bass. And uh, I'm actually able to catch the, the words of the songs a little bit better. And uh, so, so wh- wh- whichever way we do it, 
like yeah it's not a rock concert down in the base <laughs> it's not like the, the ground shaking above <laughs> because like what, what are those high schoolers doing down there <laughs> it's not like <laughs> but uh I, I i do enjoy the music there because sometimes we're even singing the same hymns that, that we're singing in the main church uh in, in high school down in the basement we're, we're, we're singing the same songs but just with a beat i enjoy it more with a beat so whether it's better or not i don't know uh but i think having solid lyrics and ha being able to truly worship out of your heart and drawing it out of your heart rather than uh just saying the words i i think people their idea of of like church a, a lot of people who have left the church young people who have left the church their idea is like sitting in the pews and and you stand up to sing with with the choir and we have, we have the call to worship and everyone's kind of just singing to the lord and it's like everyone's kind of like being lulled to sleep that that's people's idea of what worship is in the church and and now they're being drawn to uh, like uh, big rock concerts for church um i i think it, it shouldn't be oh what's the biggest and best display that we can do for the lord it, it, it's what brings the most glory because he's looking at the heart he's not just looking at us uh, moving our lips and having uh like sound coming out of mouths out of our mouths he's looking for what is in our hearts do we truly mean what we're singing so when good, solid lyrics bring that out in us, I think that's what is what's most important. So the form of uh, form of music, the the form of worship, I don't think it matters as much. Sure, you, ha you have your preferences, and that's fine. Yeah, I completely agree. I think it's yeah, it's extremely subjective. Um, as long as it's theologically sound and good, it's almost entirely up to you. I'd say don't get into the heavy metal rap stuff because yeah. that could be dangerous. But other than that, it is very subjective. And like he was saying, even at Grace Community Church, a very conservative church, there's still, you know, the uh, band. They, they still have a dr yeah. band with the drum set and all that. So it, like, even at one of the most conservative churches, probably in America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's still about that. So as long as it is theologically sound and isn't like dangerous territory, I'd say it's fine. And I yeah. think that's a perfect transition to what we like. So. Yeah. <laughs> you start. Okay. So it's very interesting because Timmy and I actually pretty much listen to the same group. <laughs> we actually didn't know that. We were just talking about this. Yeah. Um, so I'll start out with uh, one. So there's a band called City of Light. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've heard of it. If you haven't, please check them out, especially if you're into Hillsong. <laughs> because I've, I think it's sort of a transition band. Yeah, yeah. And not not to say it's a bad band. Yeah. <laughs> like, when I say that, it kind of sounds bad. But no, it's a great band. And especially for people coming out of Hillsong, trying yeah. to listen to actual good music, mm. it's, like, perfect. Because oh, it's got... so good. It's got the beat and yeah. stuff. Like, Hillsong, like, not exactly like Hillsong, very similar... But the lyrics are really good, so that it's not just the music that's pumping you up with emotions, it's also the lyrics that are actually very meaningful. Um, and another one that's a little more on the like old hymn side, uh, Sovereign Grace Music. They actually have a lot of different yeah. variety. Um, and they have a lot of great stuff for young people that are sort of new to Christianity and really theologically sound. And they have other stuff that's more hymns and just, it's a big variety. Yeah. So, um, check them out. And then, um, I cannot leave this band out. Shane and Shane. Yeah. I mean, that's probably my favorite. Oh, <laughs> they, they, they do everything. They literally do. everything. They, they, they sing every type of Christian music that, and it's all good. Yeah. Oh, I I really enjoy Shane and Shane. And the thing is, like, you could listen to like uh, songs. Like, th they don't sing songs that are like all like written by them. Most of them aren't, but their voices are really good. <laughs> so, so that's why I I enjoy listening to like most songs it, it, uh, by them. So, yeah, yeah. Um. So there's also Chris Tomlin, who is definitely 
well known in contemporary music, but he also has a lot of good songs yeah. too. Yeah. Um, one that's really popular is, is "Good Good Father." It's, yeah. It's, yeah. So it's, um, yeah. I thought I would mention that because people do know him very well. Mm. So just that's to say that's one of the people that's in contemporary Christian music and not bad. Yeah. Um, and then. You, you want to do the rest? Oh, well, well, oh. what else do you have? <laughs> <laughs> so we got the Gospel Coalition. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't listen to a ton of them, but I, I do have a few songs from my playlist on there. Yeah, so I think they're more... I think they're definitely way more on the hymn side. Yeah. Um, doesn't mean they're bad. They're, they're, they still have some songs that are more upbeat. Um, but... I'd say I, I don't think most teenagers would really like it <laughs> um, as much. And then going way further to this side, Keith and Kristen Getty. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Gettys are, you, you probably know them. They uh, wrote, like, In Christ Alone and, uh, like, a, a lot of, like, I, I, you would say, like, New Age hymns. They, they, they sound maybe more like old hymns and you're like oh it's written by people who are still living <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh they're always really good re- really good uh close friends with our church that they, they perform at grace so <clears throat> yeah yeah and then lastly we got phil webb yeah <laughs> and i had to mention him since he goes since he does sing at grace too. yeah he sings at grace <laughs> um i think you could do this one. Yeah, yeah. He, my favorites. Uh, How great thou art. My uh, when Phil Webb sings it, like if you've heard him, he belts it out. You think that he's gonna like, uh, like drop, like pop some blood vessels. Like he's so red. I remember after. making a comment. I thought he was yelling at me. Yeah. <laughs> I was yelling at and, and, and it's always like he starts out like really nice. And then you could almost always guarantee by the end he'll, he'll get like really uh, all red in the face and loud. It, 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 he's really good. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's that's the whole list. But <laughs> yep. that's not to say that that's everyone. There's yeah, absolutely. Not. Definitely more people. And my sister always comes to me with like songs that she wants me to tell her if they're good or not. <laughs> they're more new. And some of them are actually not bad. I mean, I don't like to say yes or no because there's a lot of things that sound theologically sound and then you realize, oh, wait, and like Kill Song has a completely different meaning. Yeah, yeah. And so. Yeah, but it it's it can be hard to tell, so we would recommend those if you if you're kind of wondering. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's, that was to show you that there are good artists still that are alive. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. Um, I think that's it. Any other thoughts? Um. Well. <laughs> Uh, we're still working on the audio equipment. Here. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're we're probably you're probably gonna see a lot of changes to yeah. this stuff. Okay, yeah, but I I think this first season we're still probably not gonna do a ton of crazy changes, but we're 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 gonna try to do an overhaul for season two. Uh, whenever we start filming that, so yeah, uh, we're gonna try to get like a maybe a set upgrade. Yeah, probably yeah. lights. It's just. <laughs> just wait <laughs> yeah so uh hopefully this is serviceable that, that that's what i want <laughs> and I'll, I'll just address in the previous episodes uh, i hope it's not happening now but uh w- when i like bump something or bump the mic and we were using the yeti here that was so bad uh, it was just like <laughs> you can barely hear what i'm saying sometimes i had to cut out some of it so i'm sorry for murdering your ears <laughs> uh in the first few episodes we're like banging the table it sounds like we're, we're shaking everything um hopefully that's not happening now maybe it is i don't know uh <laughs> but thank you for being patient thank you for being like oh I, these these two kids are still figuring it out so <laughs> um yeah. but anyways 
Thanks so much for watching, and we will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.